I hope we find the professor soon. Poor thing. You're just lost without him, aren't you, Luke? You're a fine one to talk. Uh, sorry to keep everyone waiting. Let's be off. Where did you go? One minute you were there, and the next you'd vanished. My apologies, Luke. I just needed to check something. But enough about that. Come along, everyone. The Towering Pagoda is just steps away. At last, we're here. And somewhere up there is the future Professor Late. Perhaps, and perhaps not. I suspect this whole affair may be more complex than we originally thought. Yes. Oh? Huh?
Excuse me, you there! Welcome, Herschel Layton. <sighs> I demand an explanation. Are you really Professor Layton? <laughs> yes, of course. Don't you recognize your old friend? I don't know. Something about you seems... off. Surely you recognize yourself, Herschel. Misfortune, our fortune, is a result of your ambition and genius. Hmm. What is it, Professor? You've put on quite a show, but it's clear to me that you're nothing but a charlatan. Oh, is that so? Professor, what tipped you off? <laughs> yes, what indeed. I'm all ears. I had a feeling you were behind this, Dr. Stungun. Or, should I say, Dimitri Allen? An impressive deduction. Does anything ever get past you, Herschel? Hmm. Hats off to you, Herschel. So you're the one who's been kidnapping scientists under my name. But why? Have you ever tried to build a time machine by yourself? It's a Herculean task. And by pinning the blame on you, I could disguise myself as one of the poor scientists who vanished. Conveniently, that also provided an excellent way to lure you here. After all, the virtuous Herschel Layton would never stand by as someone sullied his good name. Sure enough, you came running, and faster than expected at that. You're a real lowlife, you know that? So why me? You could have chosen anyone to be the scapegoat. Oh no, it had to be you. You see, you play a critical part in the completion of my time machine. Or rather, your memories do. What are you saying? The best part is that I've already got what I need from you. Of course. So that strange device... Finally catching on, eh? Those glasses you put on were a cognitive capture unit of my own design. In layman's terms, a memory recorder. But what use could you possibly have for my memories? Why, they provide me with data, of course. Your memories contain all the information I need to recreate that fateful day's experiment. Which day? The day I lost everything that mattered to me. I still don't understand what you're getting at. I'd imagine you know quite a bit about loss yourself, Herschel. Think, man. I'm talking about Claire. Claire. As you know, time travel is based on movement through wormholes. One end of the wormhole is anchored in the present. But every wormhole also needs a point of origin, 
And to find this point of origin, one needs data. Both you and Bill had substantial interactions with Claire on the day of the accident. Using your memories of those interactions, I will triangulate the point right before her death. Of course, finding a wormhole's point of origin is no easy task. If my calculations were even the slightest bit off, I could be trapped. Forever. Then why take the risk? What do you stand to gain? Everything. You see, like you, Herschel, I loved Claire. So, you intend to travel back through time and save her? Surely you wouldn't stop me. After all, haven't you wished for this yourself? Nothing can excuse the kidnapping of all those scientists. Not even this, Dimitri. You disappoint me. I had hoped a rational man like yourself would understand that the ends justify the means. I don't see it that way. Then what's your next move? Turn me into the police? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Very nicely done, Herschel. Give it up, Dimitri! <laughs> Give it up? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just getting started. Who is that? Oh. Bill Hawks! As you can see, my hostage here is something of a big shot. So I wouldn't try anything funny if I were you. Uh, you're a monster! Hmm. <laughs> oh no! I hate to disappoint you, but it seems you've failed to ensnare the genuine article. Uh, Professor? How'd you get there? Just what is going on here? Why are there two of you? Which one is the real Professor? in here. Then where's the real professor? <gasps> this is getting far too complicated. Yeah, what's going on? Take note, Luke. A true gentleman never plays his ace in the hole until absolutely necessary. Hey, Leighton, here's an idea for you. Why don't you quit it with the lectures and get me out of here? Help us, Professor! Be patient, Luke. I just need to find a way past this lock.
why Don Paolo's here. Can someone please explain that to me? Always with the questions. Won't you put a lid on it for a few minutes, you brat? I most certainly will not. Ugh, honestly, you two, would you please stop bickering? You're on the same side. And while I'm getting things off my chest, why the heck did I have to play the decoy who gets caught? Come now, Paul, it wasn't that bad. Your role was certainly the more exciting one. Professor, you still haven't explained what happened back there. I knew we'd be monitored from the moment we stepped foot inside the pagoda. So I wanted to make sure we had at least one trick up our collective sleeve. Don Paolo, master of deception and disguise, seemed like the perfect man to employ for the task. You two are friends? That's the first I've heard of this. Ha! Don't get it confused, kid. I'm no friend of his. We both want answers to the same questions. So we decided to work together. That's all. When did this start? Tell me, Luke, when we visited Dr. Schrader, did anything he said strike you as strange? Um, no, not really. It was his greeting that made me suspicious. Huh? Who's that? Oh, it's you, Herschel, and little Luke. Sure, I remember it, but what of it? He didn't seem terribly surprised to see little Luke, did he? Oh, of course. In the future, I'm not a kid anymore. But the doctor didn't even notice. Precisely. That means Dr. Schrader was... Don Paolo in disguise, yes. So you knew he was a fake before he even said four sentences. Wow, you're good, Professor. That planted the seed of doubt, though I didn't confirm my suspicion until much later. Did Don Paolo pose as anyone else? Yes. He did a bit of spying on us as Dean Del Mono when we met him last. From the moment I laid eyes on him, it was obvious we were dealing with an imposter. Amazing! How did you know? His white hair gave it away. But white hair seems perfectly natural on a man his age. Not if he wears a wig. He let me in on his secret some time ago. He's been bald for ages. Don Paolo mistakenly selected a white wig to show how much Dean Delmona had aged. Wow! Nice work there, Professor! Shortly after that, I confronted Don Paolo and had him tell me everything. It seems Dimitri had been paying him quite handsomely to make sure we headed toward the pagoda. I filled Don Paolo in on all the strange happenings we've witnessed here. And then I requested his assistance in solving this mystery. Well, that all makes sense, I suppose. But the part I still don't get is why Don Paolo decided he wanted to help us. After all, this is the fellow who tried to run us over with a Ferris wheel. That's none of your business, brat. Hey, call me a brat again and just see what happens. It was Claire, Luke. It all had to do with Claire. The woman Dimitri was talking about? Claire was my girlfriend back when I was just starting my academic career. She was a researcher who worked in the same laboratory as Dimitri. Oh, no! So she... Yes. The last time I saw her, she was on her way to the lab the day of that massive explosion. The oddest thing is that the accident received very little media coverage. It's clear someone with a lot of influence was suppressing information about the incident. I did everything I could to research the matter on my own. My efforts were largely fruitless. I had no idea. It's likely that Dimitri feels he is to blame for Claire's death. His obsession with going back in time seems like a twisted version of atonement. What a terribly sad story. 
But what does it have to do with Don Paolo? Well, Luke, as it turns out, Dimitri and I weren't the only ones with strong feelings for Claire. No way! You mean... What? Don't act so surprised. I have feelings too, you know. Thanks for meeting me on such short notice, Herschel. Oh, no. It's my pleasure. Here, this is for you. What is it? <laughs> A letter, of course. Read it at home. Why don't you just tell me what it says? I'm right here, after all. My, you're making this quite difficult. What I want to say is, well, in short, this. <laughs> Late time! You! You will pay for this someday! What was that? Huh? <laughs> Leighton has been my arch nemesis ever since that fateful day. I see. Yes, though it's worth mentioning that I had no inkling of Paul's crush until he told me himself. He was in the year above me at university. Imagine my surprise when I learned that Don Paolo was none other than my old classmate, Paul. I had no idea you'd been through so much. Sorry for being so mean to you, um, Paul. Ugh! Spare me your sappy sympathy! And my name is Don Paolo! Address me as such, boy! Anyway, you put on quite the performance, uh, Don Paolo. With you distracting Dimitri, I had just enough time to do some sleuthing in the area. So that's what you were up to while we were climbing the pagoda. Did you find anything? Yes, but I need to confirm a few facts before I can connect all the dots. Then it sounds like that should be our next move. Where to, Professor? Oh ho ho! I'll let you ponder that for yourself. But first, we should head back to the hotel. Flora and the other Luke are waiting for us there. <laughs>